Well, good day, everybody. This is Chris the Ancient Scholar, and today what I'd like to talk about is I would uh, like to talk about the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve just briefly. Um, and this is in relation to uh, some a critical care class I'm teaching right now um, over the summer. And uh, when we look at the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve, I'll go ahead and just draw it here. So I have a y and an x axis here. And on the y axis, you will typically plot your SA, okay, your SAO2. That is the saturation of arterial oxygen. So this is the hemoglobin saturation in the arteries. Um, this is not to be mistaken with the SPO2, which is a pulse oximetry reading, um, which is, uh, re reflects saturation uh, more, in, more in the capillaries. Uh, the SAO2 is uh, looking at the, the arteries. Uh, so this is from an arterial blood gas. And it compares your, um, your oxygen saturation percentage, and it compares that to the PaO2, the Pa. Uh, o2. That's the partial pressure of oxygen. It's the oxygen tension within the arteries. And it and it's a way of looking at the relationship between if I have a certain PaO2, what will my SaO2 be? Um, and uh, we can plot that curve. And I think what we'll do is we'll plot that curve in a normal, uh, just a normal person. And, and it and it's going to look something like this. It'll go up. Uh, maybe not quite like that. Let's let's see if we can we can uh, do a little do over there. Um, go and okay. So it's going to start like this, and then it's going to go up and kind of plateau off a little bit there. Okay. And and we'll say that this is a normal person. So the person has a normal hemoglobin. And so what we find is that the, the thing to look at in a normal person is I'll look at what's known as the P50 value, the P50. And the P50 is the, the PaO2 that is going to correspond to an SaO2 of 50%. Okay, So I'm just going to arbitrarily say this right here is 50%. Okay, And then we will... We will kind of look at that here. All right, so it's going to be right there, and we're going to drop down. Okay, and in a normal person, the uh, PaO2 that corresponds with an SaO2 of 50%. So maybe I'll just put uh, 50 right here. Okay, 50. Um, the PaO2 that corresponds with an SaO2 of 50% is... 27 millimeters of mercury, 27 uh, millimeters of mercury, okay? In a normal person with normal hemoglobin, 27 millimeters of mercury would give you a saturation of 50%, okay? That's what we call the affinity, the normal hemoglobin affinity. Now, what can happen is we can get into situations where this relationship can get shifted, and uh, we can have two t different situations. We can have what's known as a right shift and a left shift. So if my hemoglobin's right shifted, what's going to happen is um, I might have a curve that will look like this. Okay, so this is a right shifted curve. Okay, so a right shifted curve. Well, what 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 does that what does that mean? Well, if I plot my um, uh, if I, I look here at my P50, so I'm going to draw a line here, P50, my P50 has also shifted over to the right, okay? So I'm going to need a higher PaO2 um, to correspond with the same saturation. So what, what's going on? Why is that? Well, when we look at a right shift, I think of the R's, okay? I think of the big R's that cause my hemoglobin to be right shifted. I think of the R's. And the typical R's that we run into are uh, raised, okay, raised acids. So increased acids, all right? So if I become acidotic or my pH 
is low, right? A low pH is indicative of raised acids. Okay, so if I become acidotic, that will right shift my hemoglobin. If I have a raised temperature, okay, a raised temperature, that is going to increase or um, right shift my hemoglobin. If I my body is making um, increased amounts or raised amounts of two, three diphosphoglyceride or DPG, um, I'm also going to have right shifted hemoglobin um, and I believe raised uh, levels of carbon monoxide will also right shift my hemoglobin. Now, what does it mean to have right shifted hemoglobin? Well, I think of right shifted hemoglobin, I think of the R's and I think of release. I think of release. Okay. Let's see if I can get that here. All right. I think of release. Right shifted hemoglobin wants to release oxygen. It does not want to hold on to oxygen. Right shifted hemoglobin has a low a low affinity for oxygen. It would rather release oxygen. Okay, so if you become acidotic, you have a uh, raised temperature, you're high, very febrile, you, you're making, um, you have excess levels of 2,3-diphosphoglyceride uh, or increased levels of carbon monoxide, um, you can expect your hemoglobin to have a lower affinity for oxygen. It won't want to hold on to oxygen, and it would rather release oxygen. Now, opposite of that, I can get into a situation where, and I'll draw that in blue, where the curve is going to shift to the left, okay? So the blue is going to be a left shift. And just like the, um, the R's for a right shift, maybe what I'll do is I'll draw the L's. Okay, I think of the L's for a left shift. Um, a low, okay, a low acid. A low acid. So that is going to be an increased pH. I'm going to become alkalotic, right? Alkalosis, low acids cause a left shift. A low temperature, a decreased temp, causes a left shift. A decreased amount of 2,3-DPG or diphosphoglyceride, all right? causes a left shift. Okay, so low acids or increased pH, low temperature, low levels of 2,3-DPG, left shift the hemoglobin, and a left shifted hemoglobin, I think of LOCK. Okay, I think of LOCK, L-O-C-K, I think of LOCK. So left shifted hemoglobin has a very high affinity, has a very high affinity uh, for um, uh, oxygen, and it will lock, okay, the hemoglobin will lock onto that oxygen and it will not want to release the oxygen. Okay, um, so hopefully that made some sense. I think I'm going to cut it off here and then um, perhaps I'll do a video on how we can use this, these properties of hemoglobin, the left and right shift, how the body can use that um, to its advantage and in, in how we can tell hemoglobin to um, hold on to oxygen and to release oxygen um, in certain areas of the body where it's needed. Okay, guys, hopefully uh, you found that helpful. And as always, thanks for hanging in there.